Praise the Lord. I welcome every one of you to our Congress this year in Jesus' name. And I'm praying that all the time we have together will be a time of great blessing for every one of you in Jesus' name. And for those who are just beginning with us tonight, and you've come from the various parts of your country, and you're now coming together, and we're beginning this great con Congress, Congress for Concross. The captain of Concross will be with you in Jesus' name. And as you come together, and you listen to all that we say, how we should be well organized, and all the things we heard in the life in the camp, you make sure that as you gather together, you come with one mind, one soul, one spirit, one dedication, one decision that this year you're going to be a conqueror in Jesus' name. A conqueror in the church. A conqueror at home. And a conqueror everywhere you find yourself. That's the reason why we're looking at a book that is dedicated to conquering the book of Joshua. And as we start with the first message, from this first message, you are going to start to conquer. And you will never be the same in your life in Jesus' name. We're going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, we bless your name, we worship you and glorify and adore you. Thank you for this time, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, we thank you because we know you have not changed. You remain ever the same. The same power that went with Joshua and the people of God in those days. And they conquered the land and they possessed the land. You're still the same today. And we're praying, oh Lord, the spirit of the conqueror, you grant every one of us in Jesus' name. We pray that you make us attentive to your word. And to believe every word we hear. And to walk and to live and to observe. Everything we learn in Jesus' name. We know it's not just the hearers, not just the listeners that are blessed. But the doers of the word. Lord, if you are going to raise up giants for this day. Champions for these periods. If you are going to raise up conquerors for a time. We have to have people that are so serious and dedicated. Wanting to hear your word. And wanting to live by your word. Make us such people in Jesus name. We we'll pray, O oh Lord, that our hearts will be here. Our minds will be here. Our focus, concentration, attention will be here. And this word will be of tremendous benefit to us and to the people we minister to in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. You can sit down. Here we come to a congress. And this is a congress of leaders. The chosen people of God who are to lead the people of God to the promised land. And as you come to such a congress like this, you want to have in mind what's your vision? What's your goal? What's your dream? What's the calling of God upon your life? Is it like the calling of God upon the life of Joshua? And do you want the same success? And the same conquering ability? And the same victorious experience as Joshua? If that is so, then the Lord is calling you today to something very significant. The first message, as you see on your program, is the renewed call to the Great Commission. Renewed call to the Great Commission. We're looking at Joshua chapter 1, reading from verse 1. Now, after the death of Moses, 
the servant of the Lord. It came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou, and all this people, for unto, for unto the land which I do give to them. Even to the children of Israel, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, unto all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall no man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not leave thee, nor forsake thee. Here we have the call that came to Joshua. But the question is, was this the first time we're hearing about Joshua in the inspired word of God, in the reaching word of God, in the book of the Lord? No. We've heard about Joshua before. We've known Joshua before. In fact, as you look at Joshua, you look at a committed minister. A consecrated minister, a commissioned minister, a conquering minister, a minister that had conviction and courage. The Lord had called him. That's why we titled this the renewed call. This is not the first time the call of God will come to Joshua. He had been called before, in fact. As we look at the life of Joshua and we see his dedication and commitment to the service of the Lord, you, will, you cannot escape the fact that this was a committed, consecrated, courageous man who had walked in the way of the Lord for a long time. Actually, the name Joshua, his name one with us as you meet him in Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13 is Oshia. If you look at Numbers chapter 13, and then you look at verse 8. Numbers chapter 13, reading from verse 8. Of the tribe of Ephraim, Oshia, the son of Nun. That word Oshia in their language meant salvation. Just salvation. But, before you go too far, as you look at verse 16, it says, these are the names of the men which Moses sent to spy out the land. Moses called Oshia, the son of Nun, Jehoshua. As they joined the word Jehovah to his name, Jehoshua, that now means he by whom Jehovah was saved. Even his name. And indicated that God was going to do something wonderful, something marvelous, something tremendous, something great through this man. But you see that change of name is an indication to us. If God is going to use you in this hour, in this time, at this period, in this age, in this generation, there must be a transformation, a change. Not just change of name, a change of nature, a change of heart, a change of your spirit, a change in your attitude, a change in action, a change in vision, a change in goal, a change in the direction in which you move, a change. God was going to use this man. And the indication is already there. Number one, just salvation. And could you be used of God in this generation, any generation without salvation? 
And when you come to the Lord, you first of all have the salvation. You're not even thinking of other people. I have salvation. I possess salvation. I experience salvation. I enjoy salvation. But now as the Lord is preparing to use you, it moves you from the I enjoy, I have, I possess, I live. I, I have the salvation. It moves you to the person, he by whom Jehovah will save. That he is to have the salvation. Now he prepares you to now give the salvation to others. To show the way of salvation to others. And to show the way of redemption and deliverance to others. You go from just I have. Then you go to I give. I minister. And then as we look at this Joshua. Number one we can see is obedience to the Lord. And then we can see his obedience to leadership. We can see his commitment to the word of the Lord and the will of the Lord and the way of the Lord. And then we can see his prompt response to the call of God even in the past. And then as you see him, eventually Moses died. He had finished his job. And the Lord had called him home. And Joshua did not rush into action. Let me do something and let me do something. No. He waited until the voice of the Lord came unto him. Many times impatience will ruin us. Impatience will destroy us. Impatience will show God, hey, that fellow, that guy is not waiting for me. He feels he has the calling already. He feels he has the ability already. He feels he knows what to do already. And since he knows what to do, the key in his hand already. Why should he wait for me? That's what he thinks. Let him go ahead. I'm going to stay back. And I'm going to abandon him and leave him to his own way. But not Joshua. Joshua, yes, he knew the call of God. He knew that God was going to use him because Moses had laid hands on him. Before he led, before he died. And I transferred that spirit of the conqueror unto him. And he had said, this is he by whom Jehovah will save. And this is seed that will lead the people of the Lord, the people of God, the people of Israel into their rest, into their promised land, into the glorious land, into the land that is free with milk and honey. Even the Joshua knew. Yet he waited until it says now. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua. The Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun. Moses means a saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. You know, so sometimes. Uh, you have a problem in a state, in a country. And probably uh, the leadership there, the overseer there, is uh, told to go and pray. Take some time apart, go and pray. That's the best uh, form of discipline you can ever have in the church. Go apart, a unique time with the Lord. You're missing out on quiet time, on personal devotion, personal development. And it's showing already in your leadership, in your character, in your, in your demeanor, in your, in your way of handling things. It's showing already that you are not having enough time with the Lord. It shows in the things you do. Therefore, go and pray. What a great form of discipline. Go and get nearer to God. Go and review your life once again. Go apart. And spend time with the Lord. At that time when the leader is undisciplined as you know we say it. Somebody jumps up. Without being commissioned to do anything. He is not going to wait. He knows all that the leader would have done. He knows all that the overseer would have done. And there is no waiting. He does not wait for the voice of the Lord. For the will of the Lord. So that things will not get spoiled. When the overseer was there, I was almost like him. 
and I was his assistant and I was jumping here, jumping there, doing everything and then they just rush into ministry. Wait! Joshua waited and then Joshua as the Lord told him now arise, go over this Jordan and it was when that renewed call came unto him that now he arose and he got something done. Sometimes you have another stage a neighboring stage and then that neighboring stage something happened to the leader there maybe he is also told to go and pray and then this overseer in his own stage just sharing information that other stage is having a challenge without contacting the headquarters and without the clear voice of the lord through the headquarters, the leadership in the church. He jumps up and then he goes there. I'm doing good. Wait. Joshua taking the people of Israel into the land of Canaan is doing good. But he waited until the Lord said, Joshua, arise. This is what to do. And that ability to wait. That ability not to be impatient. That ability to rely on the Lord. Not to say we have all the methods, all the gimmicks, all the technical details, everything in our hand. And not because we know what to do. Just go ahead and do it. Wait. Moses, my servant, is dead. Arise, therefore, and go over this Jordan thou and all these people unto the land which I give to them even to the children of Israel and now as the renewed call has come the renewed call is also coming to you you're not hearing about the great commission for the first time and the Lord is giving us a renewed call and he's saying that the purpose of living the reason for existence, the reason why we're here is to reach out, is to go and do the work he has committed into our hands to do. The renewed call to the great commission, Matthew chapter 28. Reading there from verse 18, Matthew chapter 28 verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore. That's the great commission. And that's the call. Go ye therefore. And teach all nations. Why will the call come to us again? Because after a church had been established. The church, if it's not careful, will become an institution. And then all they are caring about will be nursing themselves, feeding themselves, praying for themselves, helping themselves, growing themselves. Without remembering there are more outside than inside. Without remembering the great commission is still there. That's why we need, we need a renewed call to understand that the great commission is still there. And what we're still to do is to reach out and go to the regions beyond, nations beyond, and go to the cities beyond, and go to the land that we have not possessed. That's why it's saying to us once again, we had it before, we did it before, but now it's a renewed call. And it says, go ye therefore. And teach all nations, all nations, all nations. That means then, if there are places that have not got the gospel, go and teach them. If there are countries that have not got the gospel, go and teach them. We will not be withdrawing from the great commission. We will not be pulling back from the great commission. There is a renewed call. And then it says, teaching, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And then it says, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world.
the renewed call to the great commission. I divide the message to three parts. Number one, God's call for committed ministers. God's call for committed ministers. Number two, great commission for consecrated ministers. Great commission for consecrated ministers. Number three, God's commitment to commissioned ministers. God's commitment to commissioned ministers. Number one, God's call for committed ministers. In the book of Joshua chapter 1 again, verse 1 and verse 2. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Moses, my servant, is dead. Didn't Joshua know? Joshua knew. Didn't Israel know? Israel knew. In fact, Israel mourned for so many days. Moses, my servant, is dead. But God is still alive. Moses, my servant, is dead. But the work is still very much alive. Moses, my servant, is dead. But the ministry is still alive. Moses, my servant, is dead. But the commission is still alive and new and fresh. Moses, my servant, is dead. But the original plan is still intact. Moses took the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, out of the land of captivity. And then they walked through the wilderness all those 40 years. And they were just about to enter to the land of Canaan, which is the real call and the real goal and the real purpose of getting out of Egypt. And now he is dead. And we have still not entered in what are we going to do now the vision is still alive and the original goal the original purpose is still alive whoever lives whoever dies god remains alive whoever stays whoever leaves the mission and the commission is still alive whoever gets in whoever goes out the commission is still alive. And so it says, the mission is still there. The commission is still there. The, the, the work is still there. And the original goal of entering into the land of Canaan is still there. Arise therefore and go over this Jordan, thou and all the people. Take the people with you. Don't just go alone. That's that's your ministry. That's your calling. You go over this Jordan and all these people. Take them with you. If anyone is still behind, you are not, you are not done, you have not done what you should do in ministry. Take them with you. Go over this Jordan and all these people. Now God's call to a committed minister. Why do we say he was a committed minister? Exodus chapter 17. In Exodus chapter 17, we're reading from verse 8. Exodus chapter 17, verse 8. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go out and fight with Amalek. This is the first time we're hearing about Joshua. In the written inspired word of God, Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go and fight with Amalek. The first mention of a person in the Bible is very important. What's important here, the very first mention of his name is connected with battle, with fighting, with conquering, 
were defeating the enemies of the people of God. And that first beginning, the first step, and the first mention is an indication of what he was going to do in the future. Number two, he responded to Moses' his leader without asking questions. How important that is. The very first time we meet the man, no question, no complaint. Why me? Why not him? Why not the other? And you'll find out in the life of Joshua, the rest of his life, no question. And the Lord said, arise and go, and he arose and he went. The Lord said, this is what to do, and he did it. Joshua was a family man. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He didn't go back to his family to say, Moses, I've heard you, but you know I'm not just a single man. I have, you know, this wife and these children with me. Please uh, give me a chance. Let me go and talk to them at home to tell them, this is what you are telling me. Who knows what's going to happen on the battlefield with the Amalekites? He did not do that. And you'll find out as you read the whole book of Joshua, that as the Lord gave him instruction, he never went back to the wife and to the children, to the family, saying, hey, this is the challenge we have, and this is tough. What are we going to do about this? And did you notice, arise and go over this Jordan? The Lord did not call him and the wife and say, lady, will you release this man? Dear man, this good husband, will you release him? The Lord did not take permission from the wife or from anybody. And Joshua himself to you, that's the kind of life. And that's the kind of mission he had. That's the kind of commitment he had always demonstrated. And you will find that this Joshua, he did not say, Will you please, uh, Moses, allow Caleb to go with me? Caleb was a good man, great man, a man of faith, a man of courage, a man of strength. But Joshua did not ask Moses, why not Caleb with me? He just obeyed. This life of commitment is what we have discovered in Joshua. That's what you'll discover in anybody that God will use for the great commission in this age. In this time, a committed man, a submissive man, a consecrated man, a faithful man, an energetic man, a person that has a positive drive, not somebody that is, you know, looking back, watch if I go and this negative thing happens unto me. And as we meet him, let's go on in Exodus chapter 17. I'm reading from verse Exodus chapter 17, reading from verse 9. Fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said unto him. So Joshua did. No looking back. No dragging feet. No delay. Prompt obedience. Instant obedience to the word and the will of God. So, so Joshua did. As Moses had said unto him. And he fought with Amalek. And Moses and Aaron and all went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. And you know that was known to everybody. Everybody had that. Everybody knew that. That Moses was on the mountain top with Aaron and all. And Moses lifted up the rod. He had told Joshua that. He had, and Moses and Aaron and all went to the top of the hill. He had said in verse 10, I will stand on the top of the hill 
with the rod of God in my hand. Do you notice something? When Joshua came back from the battlefield, his intimacy with Moses, his familiarity with Moses did not bring contempt. Moses, I saw that, you know, I'm winning when you fulfilled your promise. That you'll go to the top of the hill. And then you raise up the rod. And I notice that every time you raise up the rod or are defeating the enemy, Moses, uh, are you becoming weak? Then when your hands went down or losing the battle, I was faithful. Why were you not faithful? Familiarity that brings contempt was not there. The intimacy that will bring the servant of Moses, minister of Moses, to challenge Moses was not there. He just knew that I'll do my part. I'll do my job. I'll do my own work. Moses, no, I'm his servant. I'm not his judge. He is my master. I'm not his master. Neither did he go to Aaron and, oh, thank you for saving the day. Were it not for your help to lift up the old man's hand? We will not be where we are now. He didn't do that. If you are going to be chosen of God, there must be this reverence for God and respect for your leader. It says in verse 14, In verse 13, and Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. The Lord was looking into the future. And the Lord was already telling Moses, write that in a book as a memorial. Because this Joshua, he is the one that will defeat all the other enemies. Rehearse this in the ears of Joshua. And then we're told that in verse 16, for he said, because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. We're looking at Exodus chapter 24. Exodus 24, reading from verse 12. And the Lord said unto Moses, come up to me into the mount and be there. And I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have written that thou mayest teach them. And Moses rose up and his minister Joshua. And Moses went up into the mount of God. When God called Moses to come to the mountain, Joshua went with him. What's the implication of that? For all those 40 days that Joshua fasted, that Moses fasted, Joshua was with him. He didn't go back to the camp to go and eat. He too was fully, completely, totally dedicated unto the Lord. And for those 40 days, many people don't think about that. They just said, Moses fasted 40 days. How about Joshua? And then in verse 14, and he said unto the elders, tarry ye here for us. Tarry ye here for us. I'm going with this young man. He needs to know what's going on in the mountain. He needs to know what's going on when you are intimate and very close to the Lord. You elders, you stay here. This man is going to have a special commission and he must have a special experience. Tarry he is here for us until we come again to you. And behold, Aaron and all are with you. If any man have any matters to do, let him come unto them. 
And then he tells us in verse 15, and, just, and Moses went up into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount. Do you know when they were coming back? Exodus chapter 32. Exodus chapter 32. Reading from verse 15. And Moses turned and went down from the mount. So 40 days had gone by. And now they were coming from the mount. And Moses turned and went down from the mount. And the two tables of testimony were in his hand. And the tables were reaching on both their sides. On the one side and on the other were they reaching. And the tables were the work of God. And the writing was the writing of God graving upon the tables. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said unto Moses, there is a noise of war in the camp. He had not been in the camp for 40 days. He didn't know that Aaron had made the calf of gold, the, the golden calf. And the people were already worshipping the golden calf. And I was saying, this be thy God that has uh, brought you out of Egypt to Israel. Because he had been on the camp. His commitment, his intimacy with God and the people and the, and the man of God. And Moses had to tell him, it says in verse 18. He said, it is not the noise, it is not the voice of them that shout for mastery. Neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome. But the noise of them that sing, do I hear? Moses, the old man, still had more experience, more understanding, more revelation, more vision than Joshua. Joshua thought, I'm hearing the voice of the people that have conquered in battle. And Moses said, no. That's the reason he was still near Moses. He still needed instruction, revelation, knowledge, enlightenment. The point is this. That Joshua was with him. That man was a committed man. A dedicated man. God's call for committed ministers. If we lack in commitment, we're going to miss the call. The renewed call. If we lack dedication. If we lack submission to the will of God. To the word of God. If we lack obedience unto the almighty God. And the servant of God, the man of God, whom God has placed over us. We're going to miss the renewed call. Joshua did not miss the renewed call because he had this commitment. God's call for committed ministers. Exodus chapter 33. Exodus 33 verse 7. In Exodus chapter 33 verse 7, And Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without outside the camp, afar off from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of the congregation. And it came to pass that everyone which sought the Lord went out unto the tabernacle of the congregation, which was without the camp, outside the camp. And it came to pass when Moses went out unto the tabernacle, that all the people rose up and stood every man at his tent door, and looked after, the, after Moses until he was gone into the tabernacle. And then we're told in verse 9, And it came to pass, as Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle. And the Lord talked with Moses, and all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door. And all the people rose up and worshipped every man in his tent door. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp. But a servant Joshua the son of Nun, a young man departed not out of the tabernacle. You see that? A spirit of worship. A spirit of dedication. A spirit that says, no, I'll be with the man of God. You are going to the mountain top, we're together. 
You're going into the tabernacle. We're together. You're going to worship. We're together. No, I will not stay back. And all the children of Israel are to stay in their camp, in their tents. But Joshua, this committed minister, he remains with this man of God. In Deuteronomy chapter 3, I'm reading verse 28. Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 28. In this passage, that is in this verse of scripture, we learn again about this Joshua, but charge Joshua and encourage him and strengthen him, for he shall go over before this people. He was tested, and there was nothing wanting. He was tested, and there was nothing lacking. He was examined, and everything about his life showed this is material for leadership this is an instrument for a lead for leadership in the future and as you come from exodus all through to this point in deuteronomy the lord could now have confidence in the man but if he had been tested and found wanting the Lord would have chosen another there are many things that happen to us in the journey of life as we're already in the ministry and these things come as tests to find out where we are what we're going to be what we're going to do and the lord is finding out whether we're materials for greater ministry we're instruments in preparation and readiness for greater ministry charge joshua is all right now I found out everything I need to find out about him. He is the one that will do the job. And encourage him. And strengthen him. For he shall go over before these people. And he shall cause them to inherit the land which thou shalt see. The renewed commission came to a man, came to a minister that has shown real commitment and real consecration. I come to point number two. Great commission, the great commission for consecrated ministers. In Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1 from verse 2. Moses my servant is dead. Now therefore, arise, go over this Jordan. Look at the word therefore. Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore, arise. Joshua was not allowed to arise before the death of, Josh before the death of Moses. He was not allowed to say, when is this man going to die? And then we younger generation will take over. When is this man going to lose all his strength so that we the younger people can take over? Why is it his long dying? And he's spending too much time. When will it come to our turn? See, years are running by. Joshua did not do that. It's only after the death of Moses. Therefore, because Moses is dead. Because Moses is gone. Therefore, arise. I will need to know the timing of our own call. So that we are not jumping ahead and pushing the man in front of us down and taking over before our time. It says, because Moses, my servant, is gone, therefore now arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I do give to them even to the children of israel then it says every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon please understand every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon in the land that i give you over jordan not in the wilderness well, we need to understand the promises of the lord 
We cannot say every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon. I have given unto you, therefore I am going to decide. I am going to Egypt. Because what I love is, I love that land of Egypt, the land of Cucumber, and the land of Melon, and the land of Garlics. And says, the Lord says, every place the soul of a foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. Hey, what a great promise the Lord has given us. Unlimited promise that the Lord has given us. I decide any place the soul of my feet shall tread upon, that's the land I am going. No, he already said, go over this Jordan. And then he told them the parameters, the perimeter of the land where they were to take. He said from the wilderness and there is Lebanon even unto all the land of the Hittites. That's where you define your every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon. It's not just every place like that unlimited. It is this place the Lord has given. And then it says and all the land of the Hittites unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast if you are coaching the promise then understand the place that shall be your coast is when you stay within your coast every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon in that coast in that place that have i given unto thee the commission for great commission for consecrated ministers ezekiel chapter 3 Ezekiel chapter 3, the Lord, first of all, proves us, examines us, and he determines that the, the, the consecration is there. Then the commission will follow. In Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 10, Moreover he said unto me, Son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thine heart. And hear with thine ears, and go and get thee to them of the captivity, unto the children of thy people, and speak unto them, and tell them, Thus says the Lord God, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. That's the consecration the Lord is looking for from the minister, so that this great commission will then be his. He said, Ezekiel, I'm expecting something that you'll commit yourself to declaring my word and my will. Whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. Whether they will listen or they will not listen. Do you have the commitment that we're not going to be watching the attitude of the people, the facial appearance of the people, the response or the reaction of the people, whether they are going to react against the word or they are going to be proactive towards the word and be positively committed to what they are hearing. If you have the commitment that you will declare my word, whether they will hear or they will forbear, then you are going to have the great commission. Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman. I can see in you that commitment I'm looking for. That you are ready. That you are willing. That you are submissive. That you are consecrated. And you are going to declare my word. Whether they will hear or they will forbear. Because of that commitment that I see. You are now a watchman. How many people just say, uh, you know, they'll say, they, uh, we need a coordinator there. We need another coordinator there. And then they'll choose this coordinator, even though that coordinator does not show any commitment. If he has any little challenge on the pulpit, then he goes back to sit down. And when you ask him, he says, you don't know what I'm going through in my district. The people are not hearing. And the people are attacking me. And the people, they're doing this and that. And my mind is telling me that if I stay on that pulpit, the attacks will kill me. Why don't you then step down and let another coordinator who is not afraid 
of the reactions of the people take over. And why was the leader leaving him there when he doesn't show the commitment? Sometimes you have an overseer, a region overseer, or maybe a state overseer. It's always traveling out of his location, not to go and minister within his state, but just to go for a jolly good time. And then when he's talking to his friends, and you know some of the friends ask him, you travel so often. Are you like the GS traveling here and there? And then it begins to laugh. You know, playing a part. Why do you travel so often? We know about the GS anywhere he goes because he is not a state overseer. Therefore, his ministry is not limited to a state. Neither is he a national overseer for Nigeria. Therefore, his, his ministry is not limited to Nigeria. We know his ministry he is the general superintendent over all the churches of deep and life all over the world. Therefore, we understand he's traveling here and there. How about you? And then he begins to smile and says, you know what? There's so much tension in that region. There's so much difficulty, pressure in that region. And I go out to all those places to release the pressure. And to just free myself. So that, uh, you know, the people don't kill me before my time. You don't have the commitment. Why don't you leave the pulpit and then we put another person there that can do the job. But you see, you need to show that commitment, that consecration before the commission will come to you afresh. And it says, Josh, uh, this Ezekiel, you will hear the word at my mouth and you will give it to the people, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, whether they will support or whether they will oppose. And it is when you have that commitment, come what may, whatever their action, whatever their reaction, this is my duty post and I will be there. It's then the commitment, the commission will come to you. As we are here then, if you find that you are like that, for the sake of the souls of the people that are dying, if you are not going to have any more commitment than the one you had last year, why don't you just tell us and let us know that you are so much conscious of your safety and your security that you don't care about the salvation of the people. Then we can replace you with another person. And if you are a state overseer here, you know any region overseer that doesn't have the commitment, the consecration. And it's just here and there, having jolly good time everywhere. And he's hearing all this and it's not about to change. It's not about to recommit himself, to reconsecrate himself to the work of the Lord. Out of all these thousands of people who are here, can't we find a replacement? And remove the man that is not consecrated and put another one that is ready to work, ready to serve, and ready to preach the word. That's what we leaders ought to do. In fact, if we are doing our work, we'll not be afraid of, you know, taking care of that situation in that region, taking care of that situation in that local government. That the fellow that is not consecrated and committed will not be too much afraid or afraid at all to remove them and put other people, people who are better than them, more righteous than them, more committed and them, more consecrated than them. Now the word came unto Ezekiel and it says, I've made you a watchman. You will hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me when I say, Unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require thine hand. Yet, if thou warn the wicked, 
and he turned not from his wickedness not from his wicked way he shall die in his iniquity but thou hast delivered thy soul the lord gave him the commission and he accepted the commission you will accept your commission again in verse 20 when i when a righteous man does turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity and i lay a stumbling block before him he shall die because thou hast not given him warning he shall die in his sin but his right and his righteousness which he has done shall not be remembered but his blood will i require then and nevertheless if thou want the righteous man that the righteous sin not and he does not sin he shall surely live because he is warned also thou hast delivered thy soul point number three god's commitment to commissioned ministers god's commitment to commissioned ministers in joshua chapter one joshua chapter one reading from verse five joshua one five there shall not any man be able to stand before thee as long as you are stepping forward moving forward as long as you are in the commission in the ministry that i've given you as long as you are not afraid of the people of your people and you are doing what i've called you to do as long as you're in the center of the will of god you know sometimes there are times you just read the promises of god without looking at the addressee that he is the one to whom that promise has been addressed arise as long as you arise there shall not be any man to stand before you and go as long as you are going going to the place the lord has chosen and doing the things the lord has given you to do as long as you are in obedience to the great commission when jesus said and lo i will be with you always he said that to the disciples that are carrying on the great commission it's not just to every deacon harry the commitment of god is to the commissioned ministers who are carrying out the commission the lord has given them there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life doesn't matter how old you become joshua as long as you're on the battlefield and as long as you're fighting the battle of the lord and as long as you're conquering the hittites and the canaanites and the jebusites and all those hivers and the amalekites as long as you're in the work in the in the very center of the great work i've given to you then there shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life and then it says as i was with moses as I was with Moses when he was with Pharaoh, so I will be with you. So don't fear any Pharaoh. As long as I, as, as I was with Moses when he was with the magician, so will I be with you. So don't fear any magician. As I was with Moses when he was by the Red Sea, so will I be with you. So don't fear any Red Sea and don't fear any River Jordan. As I was with Moses when Korah descended and Abiram challenged his authority, so will I be with you. So don't fear any Korah descended and Abiram. As I was with Moses when the people grumbled and murmured, there was no water to drink, so will I be with you. So don't fear any murmuring and grumbling, complaining of the people as i was with moses when they got to the river and to the well of mara and it was bitter and they all shouted and chided with moses what are we going to drink so will i be with you so don't fear any situation any event anything you might go through anything the children of israel might go through just understand as i was with moses so will i be with you all the days of your life then it says i will be with thee i will not fail thee 
nor forsake thee. We're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 31. Deuteronomy chapter 31. I'm reading from verse 7. It says in verse 7, Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him, In the sight of all Israel, be strong and of a good courage, for thou must go with this people unto the land which the Lord has sworn unto their fathers to give them. Thou shalt cause them to inherit it. The Lord, he it is that does go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee. Neither forsake thee. Fear not. Neither be dismayed. Moses, why did Joshua need this? Joshua knew that giants were in the land. He had gone to the land before. He had surveyed the land before. You remember with those twelve. And then 10 of the spies came back and they said, there are giants in the land. As we look at them and we look at ourselves, we look like grasshoppers. We're not able. Joshua saw them all. And Joshua also knew that the cities were walled. Great walls, big walls, high walls. He saw each all. And when the commission was coming to him, the picture will come back to his mind. And the picture will be, I see those walls again. I see those giants again. That's why the Lord was saying, yes, you saw it all. But I will be with you. I will never fail you. I will never forsake you. Maybe you are being sent to a place when you are much younger. You were there. Maybe you went to school there. You did your higher institution there. And you said that place. Once I'm out of that place. No way. I'll never go back to that place anymore. If the only job that feeds my qualification is in that place. I'm not going to go. That place. The giants are there. And the wall cities are there. And now the call is coming to you. The great commission comes to you that that is the place to go. That is the thing to go and do. And then all the pictures of those years gone by will come back to your mind. The picture of the giants. The picture of the violent people. The picture of the warlike people. The picture of people that operate in the powers of darkness. And the Lord is saying, that is a place of ministry. Lord, no other place, no. That's your commission, the great commission. And the Lord is saying, as it was with Moses, so it will be with you. That it will not fail you, neither will he forsake you. What he defied against him because those people are warlike people. Joshua, there is nothing to fear. Because you see, as the commission has come to you, you do not think about who they are or what they can do. You think about who God is. And these are the ancient of days, the almighty, the one that never lost any battle. He is the one calling you. You will succeed. Jeremiah chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 7 to verse 9. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 7. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, inexperienced child. For thou shalt go to all that I send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces. For I am with thee to deliver thee, says the Lord. Then the Lord put his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, 
I put my words in thy mouth. Verse 17. Thou therefore get up thy loins and arise and speak unto them all that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. For behold, I have made thee this day a defensed city and an iron pillar and brazen walls against the whole land against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, and against the people of the land. And they shall fight against thee, but it shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee, says the Lord, to deliver thee. The Lord has given us a commission, the great commission. And that renewed call is coming to everyone afresh again today. And the Lord wants us to put our necks to the yoke, our shoulders to the burden. And for us to say, Lord, yes, we've heard your word. We're going to do what you have called us to do. Renewed commission, renewed call to the great commission. The Lord has called us today again and is saying, this is what to do. We're going to do it. Amen. Whatever giants on the way and whatever warriors on the way, we're going to do what the Lord has called us to do in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll rise up now and commit ourselves to this great commission. Great commission. The Lord is saying, it's coming back to us again. This is what to do. It must be done. It must be done. Open your mouth and tell the Lord and commit yourself anew. Commit yourself afresh and say, Lord, I will. Whatever challenges may come along. What the great commission, Lord, I will. I will do what you have called me to do. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The call. The call. The call. The call. Renewed call. Did he call you before? Did he show any commitment? Did he show any consecration? Did he show any dedication? Did he show any faithfulness in what he called you to do before? Or is your life a series of failures, a series of disobedience, a series of abandoning, a series of abandoning the call of God? Or are you saying, I thank you, Lord, when you called me to be a house fellowship leader? How I did it with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind. When you called me to be a zona leader, Lord, you know me. You remember how I committed myself and plunged myself into the task without looking back. When you called me to be a coordinator, Lord, I gave it everything I've got. And when you called me to be a group coordinator, Lord, I gave it everything I've got. And now that you have given me the chance, the opportunity, the, uh, the, the privilege to be... And overseer, Lord, I'm giving it everything I have got.